it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. I'm so excited that you're joining me. I have got three fantastic projects to share with you. I'm really excited about them. I am really diving in and playing with some of my celebration favorites. You guys know celebration is going on right now in July and August, and you can get free gifts with a qualifying order of 50 or $100, and there's no limit, so you can just get as many gifts as you want. This is a great time to stock up on adhesive. It's a great time to um, round out your color collection and get ink pads and re-inkers, get a paper pumpkin subscription. Oh my goodness. And Stampin' Up! has sweetened the deal by adding some new gift options for August. Now, I feel like I put it out there, but I haven't really like dug into these extra options. And so today, I am going to use several of them um, to share. In fact, I have like a little... It's like a little personal contest going on. I'm going to see how many celebration gifts I can showcase in one card. <laughs> I don't even know how much you'd have to spend to get it all for free, but um, I'm going to, I'm, I'm really excited about that card. <laughs> um, so let me show you really quick while well, I've got this sheet out. These are the, these are the additional gifts. So you can get all the, all the original stuff in here. Um, the Rings of Love designer paper, the note cards are sold out, but the stylus sketches, the hippos are still available, silver and gold, amazing freezing, tree lot dies are sold out, but we still have the wonderful world. Um, designer paper and stamp set bundle as well. But I just wanted to show you some of these new options. So two of them in particular, one of them is the brushed metallic 12 by 12 foil sheets. I just wanted to show you what that looked like. So they are 12 by 12. Um, they're, they're really very pretty. Um, I would say, oh my gosh, I can't remember now the colors. It's like copper, bronze, and gold or something like that. But I love the texture on it. It sort of has that brushed look to it. And so these come in 12 by 12 and you get two sheets of each of those colors. The other one that is a new option is the silver foil pack. And again, that also comes in 12 by 12. And it has well, one of them, or at least a couple of them, these two are kind of have that brushed look. And the other one is a very matte finish. And this is a silver foil pack, but they are a little bit kind of purple. There's one that is very much silver, and the other ones do have sort of a light purple tint to them. So if you like that, that's awesome. But I just wanted to let you know and kind of see that in the picture, um, that the silver does include those light purples. And I'm not sure which color that's supposed to go with. It is much um, of a, I wouldn't call it fresh freesia. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the old Wisteria Wonder that's not current anymore. But anyway, those are the two foil options you have. And you also get two sheets of each color color in this package. And we're going to use both of those tonight in our cards. But before we get to those projects, I'm finally digging in to the Rings of Love. I know you guys, I've been getting some questions and I have to apologize. I am still planning to do a class with the Ringed with Nature um, bundle and the coordinating Rings of Love designer paper. And I just, I just haven't had a chance to sit down and finish the designs. So um, I do plan to have that. Stay tuned, it's coming very soon. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna play with this stamp set a little bit tonight and do something with this designer paper because it's really kind of beautiful. I'm actually, I'm missing a pattern. There's one more that has um, houses, but I love this paper that it has so many different seasons. So we've got some leaves and some spring flowers and poinsettias. I guess they don't have to be poinsettias. I think of them as poinsettias. Then there's the tree rings and some mushrooms and fall foliage. And then the, um, the, I'm trying, I keep calling it, my head is calling them bees, but they're birds, the birds and the beautiful, um, sort of salted watercolor um, background there. So, um, so many different things. In fact, I want to update my calendar. Um, that's the other thing on my to-do list right now is uh, a 2023 calendar template. I've also been getting lots of questions about that. So I'm working on it and I'll try to get that posted in the next few days. 
Um, but I'm definitely going to make one with, with this designer paper because I think it covers so many different seasons. I, I really like that. Anyway, there is one, one pattern missing, the one that has the houses. Um, I used it all, I think, <laughs> for a swap card, so I got to open another package. Well, I was inspired by this card that um, came from Andrea Wellman, and it's kind of a little envelope, um, an envelope fold card. And so I thought we would give this a try and make a Christmas card. I just really thought it was clever the way it kind of opened up like that. So I wanted to do something with this. So she also used the Rings of Love designer paper, but I chose the different pattern here with the flowers of their poinsettia. So I've got some measurements and I haven't actually made this card. So we're gonna kind of do it together as we go. So let's start with our card base. This piece is five and a half by 10 and a half inches. And I've scored at three inches and seven and a quarter. Um, and so the three inches, I think this is actually upside down. The three inches is going to be the bottom piece and the other one is going to be the top like that and so for the top flap i have a piece of designer paper that is three and a quarter by five and a half i'll have the measurements in the video description for you collect my little post-it notes and i'll add those and um so this is going to go on the front flap and then we are going to use um we're going to use some border dies to create that um that envelope flap. So I really like the pointed. So we're going to do that. Although you do have some different options with the basic border dies. These are in the annual catalog and so much fun to add a little fun to your card. I feel like you could use so many of them for different things, but we're going to just keep it kind of simple. And I'm going to actually attach the designer paper to the card base before we do the die cutting. So let's get our adhesive out and let's add that I have an urge to reach for a glue stick. <laughs> I guess you could also use the liquid glue, but my thought is I want to have lots of coverage with this designer paper because I'm gonna end up cutting the edge off and I want there to be, um, I want there to be adhesive, you know, and not have an open edge. But I guess if there is an open edge there, I can always add a little adhesive. So I'm gonna run this through the die cutting machine. Let's see if we can bring it up here. I just had it on the floor. We might need to go a little higher with our camera to get it all in view. Here we go. <gasps> Uh-oh, you get to see a little extra on my desk. Um, so this is going to go through the machine. And I want that point to be out like this, kind of centered there. And usually with dies like this, I try to, I guess this one is not quite straight. I was going to say I try to kind of come in at an angle. Um, but on this long on this long cardstock, I really don't have a lot of options. So that's going to go right there in the center, die cutting both through the designer paper and through the cardstock at the same time. So we're sending this through. There it is. A little shake, shake. This is again the basic border dies. That's what I'm using to cut it. One, five, 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 eight. Did I say too many fives in there? <laughs> Let's put this back down on the floor. And we have our beautiful stitched edge. That's so pretty, isn't it? I love that. It looks like, a, I feel like I could add a little ribbon and make like a little purse out of it. We're gonna do some simple decorating here. And um, I'm going to use that flower and the Merry Christmas and the little center for the flower. So I've got, I've got a cardstock piece here and the colors I picked out were to match the designer paper. So I've got Poppy Parade, Crushed Curry, and Evening Evergreen. And so we're gonna start with the, we're gonna start with the Poppy Parade. And it looks like I might need to re-ink this puppy. I'm gonna just try to pop it around. Oof, I think I got a funky ink pad going on right now. And we're gonna add some crushed curry in the center. Mm. It's hard to see, but it adds just a little bit of color. I kind of like that. And I'm not quite sure I'm thinking about doing a circle. I know I seem so unsure of myself. 
this oh my goodness this poppy parade is not cutting it for me let's bring out our real red and see if we can get a better a better stamped image now i'm wondering if it's real red and not poppy parade on the cardstock i love that a lot better oh i'm really wishing i used real red so here's Real Red against Poppy Parade. I don't know. I feel like it could go either way. I'm going to stick with the Poppy Parade because it's on there. But I'm definitely going to do the Real Red here for the um, for this stamp image. I think that is a lot better. A little yellow in the middle. It's hard to see but it's there and then we're going to do I was trying to decide if I should fussy cut it or use a circle die and I'm thinking about using a circle die and then fussy cutting it over it so maybe like a yellow maybe we'll cut this from yellow and then I did cut the banner to do Merry Christmas. Let's see how well I can stamp on the die cut batter, die cut banner. And if I don't get it right, then I'll try again and use <laughs> the die to die cut. That's a tight fit, but it works, doesn't it? Okay, so we have our Merry Christmas and we're going to do a little fussy cutting. I double checked and this um, this set does not have a die for the flower image. The, actually, the cool thing about this bundle, the Ringed with Nature, is it has the, um, the ringed embossing folder, the hybrid embossing folder that will die cut and emboss at the same time. I still have not used it. I, <laughs> like, I cannot believe it. I seriously feel like I just have had no time. Um, to sit down. So that is on my immediately to do list um, is to get those cards designed and play with that. So I'm actually planning to work on it after the video tonight and sit down. It might be a little late night stamping. Do you guys stamp during the day or mostly do you stamp at night? Leave a comment and let me know. I feel like I always have been an evening stamper. Obviously now with the kids older, I do stamp more during the day, like when they're at school and um, and stuff. But I've always, I don't know, I've always felt my creative mojo hit in the evening. But then again, I am just a night owl in general. So I guess it would make sense that I'm a late night crafter. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot of you are, are nighttime crafters. I love it. Okay, so we're going to do our, um, we're going to do our, our little, um, spot down here and you know what I'm actually thinking maybe I would like that circle to be an evening evergreen to kind of tie in um the Merry Christmas so I'm going to grab a piece of evening evergreen I should have had it done ahead of time, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did cut that off camera. And, oh, look at how that pops. That is gorgeous. I do love it. Okay, so now I have to decide, do I want it to go down here and kind of hold that flap in place? Or do I want it to go, like, more up here? Oh, that is tricky. I feel like this might be a little bit low to have it fold. Hmm, let's get this layered up. We're gonna use some Stampin' Dimensionals here. Um, yeah, <laughs> I love this evening evergreen. This is one of the in colors and just so, so pretty. Okay, so this is going to go, ooh, interesting. What if this was down here and this, 
<laughs> is that weird? What if that tucked underneath the banner to hold it in place? I kind of like it. So we're going to use some tear and tape. Let's see how well we can get this dark. We're going to use some tear and tape. And I'm going right down here in the corner, not in the corner, like at the, at the point with our tear and tape. And then the circle is going to attach to the point. And so, oh, that works really well. And so then this tucks in to hold it closed. Look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I like the way this is turning out. I think in, like, I might, and we, I guess we could still do this. I was going to say, I think the only thing I would change is maybe to come up a little bit higher with the points. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's just tear that off really quick. <laughs> this is, this is it. We always tear off at least once, right? Um, I am going to just, I know you guys are thinking, how are you doing that? I don't even know. Sometimes I don't put on the adhesive, like I don't push down on it a whole lot. And so the tear and tape did just roll right off. Um, I can't promise that you'll be able to do it at home, <laughs> but, um, it's all about the right kind of pressure when you're trying to tear your card apart. We're going to send this through and we're going to bring it up just a little bit like that. Let's take this off while we're thinking about it. twist. That's the other key. Twist to get that pressure. Okay. So, ba -ba -ba, we are going to send this back through the die cutting machine and go just a smidgey higher. I have to just say like that. Just like a little like quarter to a half inch. I guess that'd be like three eighths inch. Let's get our die cutting machine. Bring it back up here. We're going to send this back through and just take off a little bit more. I just think I'm going to like that spacing a little better. Okay. Just like that. All right. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Sorry for the shaking. Okay. <sighs> hey, that is kind of cool. <laughs> I think we're going to have to use that for something. I don't know what yet, but uh, definitely we're going to have to use that for something. Okay, so now this is going to go, well, it can go a little bit higher. And then that just has a little room to breathe. I like that better. So let's do this one with Stampin' Dimensionals again. But Merry Christmas. So maybe right about, trying to center it, right about there. Why is it so hard to center things? There we go. The circle and the banner, I don't know if I said this, the circle and the banner both come from the stylish shape dies. And this is one of my new favorites. We had the stitch shapes for a while, which was ovals and circles and squares. And this is square circles and banners. A little bit different. Um, there's also a difference in um, a double stitched edge. So both the outline and the inside. Um, and I'm not sure, honestly, which way I like it. Um, but this is a versatile a versatile set. So if you don't have um, stitched shapes yet, this is a good one to have. If you already have the stitch shape dies that we had before, you, you probably don't need a new one. Okay, there's the front. Then for the inside, we have a piece of white that is four by five and a quarter. And, um, ooh, ooh, ooh. oh, yes. <laughs> We're just going to use some regular adhesive and just embellish this edge on the inside a little bit. Oh, that's pretty. 
Oh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so four by five and a quarter, that's the white piece to go inside. And um, it's almost looking like a schoolhouse, isn't it? Let's stamp a couple of those poinsettias in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. We want to go over the edge, so I'm going to bring in my small grid paper. And I'm going to do just a couple, a couple of the poinsettias. Now this one, I'm trying to think if it has... If it has any inside sentence, we've got thinking of you, get well soon, just for you, happy anniversary, love and warmth. I guess we could do love and warmth on the inside, but I think I'm just going to leave it blank with the flowers stamped. I think that will be good. Oh, I've got all my little, come on, I'm trying to clean up after myself. Okay, grid paper back on the floor. Let's glue this down. And card number one is almost complete. You could dress this up, of course, by adding some more designer paper. Um, I'm just going to kind of leave it simple like that. I love it. You know what? Actually, I'm changing my mind. You know what would be really fun is if we had like a little pocket, right? Like a little pocket that we could have a gift card in. Wouldn't that just be perfect? because it's a Christmas card. I have a little gift card floating around. Where did it go? This one will do. This is a little coffee gift card. And so you wanna make sure that you have enough room to add your adhesive and still be able to slide the gift card in there. And so I think we need a piece of designer paper that is a little bit bigger. This is three inches. And so if we go two and three quarters, let's try that. Let's go um, two and three quarters by three. And see, is that enough to fit the adhesive around the edges? I think so, if we can keep it, if we keep it really close, right? So what I'm gonna do is I wanna add a little notch. And so I'm gonna get, Okay, guys, I'm cheating and I'm gonna use my circle punch <laughs> because it's easy and convenient. But if you don't have a circle punch, you could use those same dies and you could die cut a little circle for that to go under there. Do we like it there? Do we want it here? I think it's gonna be fine over here. That just seems like a perfect place for it, doesn't it? Okay, have you guys started thinking about Christmas yet? I know it's, it seems way, way, way too early. But with so many gorgeous Christmas things in the new July through December catalog, oh, it's hard not to think about Christmas already. I'm going to put my adhesive right up to the edges so that there's plenty of room for the gift card to come in and out. And then I'm going to test it before I stick it on. Let's see and make sure our card... Yeah, it looks like there is enough room. It'll be a little bit tight, but it'll be just right. Okay, so this designer paper again was three inches by two and three quarters. And I'll have that measurement in the description with everything else. It's going to go right in the corner like that. And then our gift card fits in there. You know what we do have? Look at this. We have a just for you in this set. So let's go ahead and stamp that. Right, a little just for you right over there. I like it. We're over here. I like it down there. Did we have a green? There's our green. just for you and it folds up and tucks underneath the Merry Christmas. All right, there's our first card, an envelope fold card with a gift card pocket. Super, super easy. You could put that in any kind of card that you have, a little gift card pocket to make it into a gift. Oh my goodness. All right.
that turned out even better than I planned it to. I love it when that happens. Let's move things over. And we'll move on with our next card. What do you guys think about that Rings of Love designer paper? Isn't it so much fun? Stay tuned for details about that class. Like I said, I've got to get all the designs. I've been sketching them out and I've got things kind of planned in my head. So I will let you know as soon as I get that all designed so that um, you can sign up and we'll do that. It'll be a free online class that we do on YouTube and you can follow along at home. You'll also be able to get a card kit with a pre-cut material so that you can um, stamp along more easily and have everything that you want. But we'll definitely be using that Ringed with Nature bundle and we'll pair it with the ring, Rings of Love designer paper. If you want, you can get the Rings of Love designer paper for free during celebration with a qualifying order in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. Are you ready for our next card? <laughs> Let's move on and create with, da, 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 where'd my stamp set go? The hippos. Oh, here it is. The cute little hippos. Oh my gosh, don't you love these hippos? Okay, so in our celebration brochure, we have hippos, the hippest hippos, and the coordinating hippo dies. I wasn't paying attention when I ordered recently and I accidentally ordered two French hippo sets and the name of the French set is Hip Hip Hippo. <laughs> oh, I'm going to send it back in and exchange it for the English version. Sometimes that happens. Do you ever make an oopsie and order the wrong thing? It's no problem. See, but it always is happy to take care of it. So I'm just going to send that back in and exchange change it for the English ones to have some extras in my stash. I just love these hippos. Let's start with some hippo cards because they're just so stinking cute. I, I think I've shared these before, but I'm going to share them again because I just love them. Um, last night, no, not last night, Tuesday night, I did the great big card swap and I shared a witch card by Mercy Ermakoff and she used this same little flap peekaboo flip card and so if you haven't seen this i'll add the link in the video description so you can check it out i made this um i think in a video with mom and I, we were highlighting the hippest hippos steam set just such a fun fun card but look at these other hippos this one's from angie leach and then i've got this one from kelly atchison love this one from mary mcneely this one from betsy Kreider. Oh, look at that cutie. I love all the accessory dies in here. The boat, the little lifesaver, and the waves, and the sunglasses. This one is from Carol Nordquist. And finally, one from Gwen Duckworth. Oh my gosh, this one is my favorite. <laughs> I love the clean and simple layout and the, the silver foil tub on there and the little towel from the ribbon. How stinking cute. Well, I wanted to use this one. I have made um, a couple cards and I haven't used the ballerina yet. And so my card today is going to use the ballerina. And um, I, I have some things pre-cut and ready to go so we could jump right in one of the other things that i'm really excited about is one of the new options the dots and spots die um i had kind of been eyeing that in the annual catalog except i just felt like it was kind of expensive for one die that only did one thing and so i wasn't gonna get it but then stampin up said hey you can have it for free if you want and i was like well okay go ahead and send it <laughs> i was stocking up on some stuff and um i was excited about these new options so the dots and spots die where did it go right here it is literally just one die that cuts a background of you guessed it dots and spots <laughs> so i i cut out the background for this card using that die this is our card that i'm going to use like everything okay so we got our dots and spots background and this card was inspired by one that um, I posted recently on Facebook that um, kind of inspired me. It was a really fun little layout that Stampin' Up! shared. And it, I had, th there were three different versions of the card using the hippos, actually, created by Stampin' Up! concept artists. And there was a like a clean and simple 
purple stepped up and an over the top. So this is my version of that card. I just thought that layout was really fun. All right, so we've got our dots and spots. I also have a piece of, <laughs> I just saw Nancy's comment, would make great cheese. Absolutely it would. <laughs> I was thinking about Swiss cheese <laughs> when, when I when I made this uh, or when I die cut this piece earlier. We have some caroling mice. Maybe the mice would like uh, a Swiss cheese background. <laughs> okay, so the other part I'm using is a little piece of designer paper, and this is two inches by three and a half inches. And um, this is part of the silver and gold specialty paper. This is another celebration gift option. I told you guys I was going to try to use as many things as I could on this card. So we've got we've got some dots and some stripes in gold and in silver. Isn't this great paper? It's so versatile. In fact, the, one of the cards I just showed you, this one by Angie Leach, she used a little bit of that striped paper and colored it. So just a great little accent on everything. I did um, this for my 12 Days of Christmas video series and I stamped with the Season of Chic stamp set. I stamped on that designer paper to kind of like create my own custom paper and I really love the way that turned out so gold dots over here silver dots over there um definitely try stamping on your paper so gorgeous you can add some color to it in fact I have another card um this one is from Natalie Travis and she used the blending brushes to add some color um to the background so you can stamp on you can spritz it you can brush it you can color it or you can just use it like we're going to use it today and just have a little piece of designer paper as kind of an accent piece so actually i'm gonna do a little magic of tv Boop. <laughs> And I tied some of my white twine around that piece. So that's going to go on this side of the card. And then I punched out a piece from Smoky Slay with my favorite new punch, the decorative circle punch. So this is kind of just like a wavy circle. It does have, it's not quite um, the same waves all the way around. Like if you, if you notice, let's see if I can hold it up maybe here on the white. Um, the top and the bottom have like a wider wave um and then they're a little like they're not all equidistant i guess i'll say it's really really subtle um but i i just love the shape i love that it's a little something different and you can layer on it so i've got the the punch circle there that smoky slate and a little bit of that silver foil i showed you that earlier that's another celebration gift that you can choose for free with a qualifying order so just just like a half inch by three inches and then i have um stamped a little square that's one inch by one and a quarter and it says you're always on point and so of course the only thing we have left to do is to stamp our cute little hippo so we're going to do this in the tuxedo black memento ink pad and we're going to use stamp and blends to color in our cutie patootie little hippo did you guys see i have seen people turn these into cows and i mean really they're not that far off from a cow right um they have the same sort of like you know face and um and ears and everything so totally adorable hippo both cows I think you could make it pass for either one I'm going to use um the smaller tip because I noticed that my um my big tip on my light smoky slate is getting kind of frayed and so I have a little bit more precision with this smaller tip so I'm going to color I don't know if I can color and talk at the same time <laughs> I feel like I gotta really concentrate here and not go out to the lines. Do you guys like Stampin' Blends? You know, I'm not a big fan of coloring, but I'm coming around. <laughs> and Stampin' Blends really makes me feel like I can be an artist. I feel like it's really easy to use the Stampin' Blends. And so um, I, I find that I'm coloring more with the Stampin' Blends than I did before. Uh, that brush tip is definitely a lot easier for bigger areas like the nose. I think it's 
time to refresh some of my markers and get some new ones. Oh my goodness, I'm really all of a sudden noticing this is kind of running a little bit dry. Okay, definitely gonna reorder this one. Um, so let me just switch colors and give that one a little rest. I'm gonna do some dark gray. This is just a, the darker of the, um, the darker smoky slate. For the belly, I am using some creative license here. I really don't know um, what color hippos are. <laughs> but, but this one is going to have a dark belly. It's probably the other way around. Usually you'd have a lighter belly, I think, with, um, with a darker, darker body. But I'm doing a uh, pink. This is Flirty Flamingo, which is the same color as my cardstock. And she's totally going to have some painted nails. Let's go back with our light color again. Sometimes it just needs like a minute to sit. Yup, I definitely need to replace. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so stinking cute. Well, normally I would go back with this marker and I would kind of add just some highlighting. And just kind of outline a little bit. But my marker is really kind of running low, so that's not working so well. Adding a little wink of Stella to the tutu because it's a tutu. Of course, I need to add a little sparkle. It's kind of subtle, but it's there. All right, so then we're going to use the coordinating hippo dies. Now, these are available separately, so you can get this one free with a $50 order, and then you can get this one free with a $50 order, and you can get them both if you order $100 in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. So I'm going to use this one to die cut the um, the hippo, but we also have all these really great accessory dies like the washed up and the waves and the umbrella and the grass and the flowers and the splash and the um, scuba mask. Well, scuba mask and the scuba snorkel and the lifesaver and the motor for the boat and the boat and the hearts and the party hat and the sunglasses and the stars. There's so many cute things in here. I showed you some fun samples of all the ways that you can use those dies. We're going to do another magic of TV moment and cut that out. <laughs> um, and then we're just going to go ahead and glue this card together. I am thinking, though, that we might need to have some sparkle. So um, I don't know. Tell me what you think. Should we do some rhinestones on here or should we do some pearls? Leave a comment and let me know what you think. We got a little silver going on and our cute little diva. Tell me what kind of embellishment you think I should grab to finish off our card after we get all the other elements. I'm using some Stampin' Dimensionals to pop this border and the big ones kind of fit right inside these dots. You could use the little ones if you're kind of worried, but I think it's filling in just perfectly um, and I am um, I didn't space these very well did I <laughs> I just want to make sure everything's covered and I probably should have planned a little more strategically like maybe move this one down here okay I just want to make sure it's well supported and not sinking um, so I'm going to just take all those paper backings off I think I got them all and this is going to go um, closer to the fold. So I actually did trim. After I die cut it, I trim it a little bit because it had like half circles and I didn't really like them. Um, so I just changed it so that it was um, straight. So it is a little bit shorter, uh, but these holes looked nice on the top and the bottom. So I just left it, which is fine. It doesn't have to go all the way across. This one is going to go all the way across. And so I'm going to put some Stampin' Dimensionals here on the end to 
kind of prop it up with that layer and then some regular adhesive. You wanna make sure to tie your bow before you add this layer to the card. That's gonna go right up against the card edge. And so now this is the sink because I added the stamp and dimensionals. This is nice and propped up with the background. Okay, we're gonna add our um, our strip of the silver toward the bottom of the circle, kind of like a little stage, I guess, for our um, for our hippo with some stamp and dimensionals. I know these hippos just really are the cutest. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to add that to the card right about there. Uh, Flirty Flamingo is the card base color. And then I did use some Blushing Bride for the sentiment. You're always on points. And I'm just going to kind of tuck that under there. And I think I want this one to be on stamp and dimensionals. So it's kind of on the same level as the hippo. I try to limit my stamp and dimensionals and not use too many. So I've got stamp and dimensionals under the polka dots and stamp and dimensionals under the hippo and the greeting. Those are all that layer. So there's like two, two layers of stamp and dimensionals. Oh, so stinking cute. I love it. Okay, what did we decide on embellishments? I'm going to scroll back through your comments and see. Oh, the white hearts. What a great idea, Carol. I forget about those. I have hardly used them. We have some heart pearls um, that are just perfect. Nancy, you're so smart. <laughs> the the little um and maybe that is what it's supposed to be i thought it was a snorkel but um nancy's saying i she thought it was a shower head and it totally works as a shower head with the little tub you're so smart you're so smart nancy and then you could have <laughs> you can have the water droplets Oh my gosh, I love, love, love these little hippos. Let's let's see if I got those those white heart pearls and we'll see what we can um find in my box to um embellish our card. Let's get rid of the dimensionals. Okay. I keep all of my embellishments in this little kind of like shoe box. So we've got the iridescent basic pearls. That's a good option if we can't find the hearts, but I'm pretty sure that I have the hearts in here. In fact, I haven't opened them yet. <laughs> that's a sad thing. <laughs> We're gonna fix that. I, I, that's why I keep forgetting about them. So the heart pearls, it's actually quite a big package. Here's the iridescent pearls and then the heart pearls, very big. We've got a couple different um, styles in here. Let's open it up and take a look. Our, Heart pearl. These are in the annual catalog, and there's a lot of embellishments in the annual catalog, so you may have overlooked them as well. It looks like we have some sort of iridescent heart pearls, and then these other ones, they kind of look the same, don't they? Like the top and the bottom, sort of a frosted. These are glossy, and these are more matte. I guess these are like white, and then these are like shiny white and then more of a matte white. It kind of reminds me of the sea glass. Well, I'm kind of digging these little, um, the pearly ones. So we're gonna do, oh, so cute. We're gonna do some pearly hearts in the middle of our dots and spots. So we got two big ones and then a little one. Oh, that is just the sweetest. <laughs> I love the way that turned out. Oh, what a perfect choice. Thank you so much for suggesting that and reminding me about these heart pearls. Not, there are a lot on there. 180 heart pearls. So if you like hearts, that's not only for Valentine's Day. Look at this cute card we made with the hippo. Um, I think it's just good for all kinds of occasions. 
Okay, so that was hippos. And on this hippo card, we used the hippo stamp set and the hippo dies. And we also used the spots and dots dies. And we also used the silver and gold designer paper. And we also used <laughs> the silver foil cardstock that you can get for free during celebration. Is that everything? We used one, two, three, four, five five different celebration gifts on this card oh my goodness of course you can use any um anything to substitute with this same layout you can use designer paper instead of the dots and spots you could use the elephants or other cute little animals instead of the hippo you have twine i'm sure at home any kind of little embellishment there and then you could just do a coordinating color cardstock instead of the silver and a different piece of designer paper or a salad um, for that one so whether you have all of these goodies at home or something similar, I hope you'll give this fun layout a try. I really do like that. I'm definitely going to have to try that again. Uh, but let's move on for now because I've got another great card to share with you that you guys are going to love. <laughs> I'm really excited about this last card. Um, so... I showed you earlier in the video, one of the other celebration gift options that was added for August is the brushed metallic 12 by 12 um, paper. Okay, so we've got um, the, the three different colors, copper, gold, and um, bronze. What was, I forget what the other one is supposed to be. They come in 12 by 12 and you can cut them to whatever size you want. So I cut for our card, I cut it down to um oh hold on where's the other piece i cut it down to um three and seven eighths inch by five and an eighth inch <laughs> so just a little bit smaller than a regular card front i don't know i just liked having a little bigger border there then i took the new leaves embossing folder 3d embossing folder and holy smokestacks is that is that not just gorgeous i love this so much this embossing folder is kind of hiding um in the in the mini catalog so let me grab it out so i can show you where it is okay so looking at the july through december 2022 mini catalog it's kind of back here with some of the fall stuff and I should have had the page mark. There it is. On page 53, bup, 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 right there, leaf fall 3D embossing folder. And I mean, if you weren't paying attention, it'd be really, really easy to miss. You can also find it in the index in the back of the catalog, but that's also really easy to miss as well. Do you guys order from this index? I actually do quite a bit. Like if I'm looking to see what I want from the mini catalog, this is sort of a really great summary, the catalog at a glance. And so if you're looking at the embossing folders, which are sort of sandwiched between the stamp sets and the dies, it's right there in the middle. Um, the Leaf Fall 3D embossing folder. Okay, let me show you this embossing folder again. It is a six by six embossing folder. It has this really nice, like, really nice flow of leaves. It's not, although it's not a complete embossing folder. It does leave some portions that are just sort of empty space, which I love. So you can have your leaves be vertical or horizontal like whichever way you want it to go it's a 3d embossing folder that is sized to fit in the larger um stamp and cut and emboss machine okay so this is going to be our card front so gorgeous but as i was getting ready for the video tonight i came across this card um that i made last year or the year before and i just thought it was so much fun i actually used some masks and stamp and blends to create the polka dots here but what i really loved was sort of this like inset um spotlight embossing and so i started by die cutting um, die cutting our leaves with the stitched or the stylish shape dies that we have been using all night. But the thing that I don't like about it, and I just mentioned this earlier, is that it, it die cuts a stitched border on the outside and on the inside, which is great because you have two options, but when you put them together, I feel like maybe it's too much stitching. 
And so this one, I just feel like it's a little bit cleaner. And so what I decided to use was to, to save this and use it on the inside and instead create a card where the inside piece is just inside the frame. So I'm using this stamp set called Inspired Thoughts. I feel like I've used this one a little bit recently. It's got a lot of really great sentiments in it. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thinking of you on your special day. Hello. I love this one. You make a difference every day. And so this one as well, it's your time to be remembered, to feel appreciated, and to know that you're celebrated. Okay, so we're going to do this. We're going to add this on the card with some um, regular adhesive. And then we're going to add our sentiment. But I want to kind of go with the same thing we got going on here with some ribbon. And so I'm bringing in some of this new woven ribbon. This is from the mini catalog. And so I have a little piece. I love that this is just so like rustic and, you know, weathered um, because I think it really fits as a good fall ribbon. So I'm just kind of going doing a little back and forth here. And this is going to go in the in the window and then we're going to do that on top with Stampin' Dimensionals. So let's put this down first and we're going to use my little trick with the tear and tape. So we're going to get the tear and tape out and we're going to hold that ribbon down with the tear and tape. I always use my fingernail and then kind of pull against it. Hopefully we got big enough pieces here. is too long bring it back and tear it we want this to be able to cover up gotta be careful over here too okay I used uh, very vanilla to die cut a smaller one of the stylus shaped um, squares and then we'll use our Stampin' Dimensionals to add this to the card. I'm using my Stampin' Dimensionals on the top and the bottom because the ribbon is kind of in the middle and already a little bit bulky. So I'm going to try to avoid extra bulk and do them on the top and bottom. Oh, oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. I really, 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 really love this brushed metallic foil with the leaves. I just, oh, it's so pretty. So, so pretty. You guys know fall is my very favorite. Well, I've got a piece of very vanilla to go on the inside, and I thought since we're not using this, it would be great to use it on the inside. So here's what I came up with, and I haven't tried it yet, so hopefully it works. We're going to take our paper trimmer, and we're going to cut this in half diagonally. So I'm just lining that up on the track, and I'm going to cut that diagonally, and then I thought we could use this inside the card as corners and they're maybe a little bit bigger than I normally would do but um, I think it's a great way to tie in the gorgeous embossing folder and not lose that beautiful image. I also have something on the inside from the same stamp set inspired thoughts it says thinking of you on your special day. So I'm going to kind of center those. I don't want to glue them down in case I mess up the sentiment. I can still turn it over. Hey, I think I did pretty good. <laughs> so let's go ahead and glue everything down now. I always do that. I want to make sure I can stamp it right in case I need to turn it over and try again on the other side. That's what I love about stamping up. Um, cardstock is there's two sides to every piece you can turn it over and you can stamp on the other side if you mess up and um, unless you're using Stampin' Blends you won't see um, you won't see the other side so if you had a boo-boo and you turn it over nobody will know <laughs> oh my gosh that is just so elegant I love it always got to make sure you dress up your inside to match the outside. Oh my goodness, so pretty. Really a very easy card, um, but just so elegant. So there's the front, we've got our squares and the ribbon, and then the inside. Thinking of you on your special day. Okay, you guys, so 
So just a refresher. This is that brushed, the brushed metallic 12 by 12 foil paper that you can get for free during celebration. This is free with a $50 order. So if you already have ordered and you're like, I don't want anything else. I have the hippos. I'm good. Um, get some of this stuff. We have some really great embossing folders, the timber, gingham, and seashells embossing folder. Then we have the brush metallic paper, the silver foil paper, and the craft gift boxes. Those are all $50 order options that you can get for free. And then some dyes, the flowers of home, the dots and spots, the daffodil dyes, and of course those aspen tree dyes. Those are my top choice um, with a $100 order. So these are good until August 31st while supplies last. So make sure you get your celebration order in over at juliedavison.com slash shop definitely add that to your wish list <laughs> the leaf fall 3d embossing folder so you can make this gorgeous card let's review what we made tonight we were very busy weren't we 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 made this gorgeous fall card we made our cute little hippo card with all the celebration goodies and then our envelope fold card with the rings of love and it even has a little gift card pouch if you if you are joining late and you missed that you're definitely going to rewind and watch the replay um, to see how we did this one it was so much fun leave a comment and let me know which of these cards is your favorite which of these is one that you would make at home I hope you feel inspired by the projects that I shared today. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up or give it a heart here on Facebook. Make sure to subscribe over on YouTube if you're watching there so you don't miss out on future card making videos. Mom and I are going to be um, together, but I think we might pre-film this week's video. Um, it's, we have a very busy weekend planned, but we still will have a video up on Sunday, whether we're, whether we're in person or whether it's pre-recorded so be sure to tune in on Sunday at noon central time mom and I will be using the perched in a tree um, bundle with the aspen tree um, dies which is one of those celebration gifts I was talking about so you you won't want to miss what we have to share I think you're gonna love it all right guys have a great night and I will see you very soon with another paper crafting video bye